everyone welcome back to day two of the r18 turbo build on the last video you guys probably saw a lot of work getting done in summary we mocked up the turbo we did the oil drain bung we tapped into the oil t for the feed we kind of decided where we're going to route it and much much more if you guys missed the first video highly recommend go and check out the first video for all the details on this video guys we're gonna be mocking up the intercooler setup and i got most of the intercooler setup mocked up already and this is going to be probably honestly the most challenging is trying to figure out intercooler piping routing but i think i figured it out i think we'll have the intercooler piping dialed in today and hopefully hopefully maybe just maybe we can start it today so the kit comes with a bunch of these two inch 90s and honestly i have all three and i didn't use a single one of them i don't recommend them now from the last video i cut some of the intercooler piping here i didn't like how it was routed so i used another two pipes and then i connected the intercooler piping over here let me show you guys from the bottom you see you got one coming from the turbo with a straight coupler and then I had to cut this pipe right here so again it's another two inch to two inch coupler here ideally I'd like these welded but this is still in a good location where the coupler's not right by the down pipe right here and you still got you know a good two inches from the down pipe whereas the other intercooler fitting I tried on was literally maybe five millimeters from the down pipe so that's better eventually we might heat wrap the intercooler piping here maybe even heat wrap the down pipe we'll see but that's that's pretty good pretty tight clearances on the radiator we actually cut some of the radiator uh, housing off on the top to make it fit this bend right here by the passenger side is the very tightest it's it's a very sharp 90 i mean it's resting as you can see up against this frame ideally i'd like to cut a square out so this thing has a little bit more room to angle because again this coupler it's gonna work but i just feel like this coupler is bending a little bit too much on the driver's side we're starting off with a two and a half inch to two inch 90 going into the mass airflow sensor housing again and these are reduced from two inch to 2.4 inch I believe and again 2.4 inch to 2 we got the blow off valve right over here it's sitting pretty high actually most likely we're gonna have to angle it down in order to clear the hood and we're gonna be routing the blow off valve hose here to the vacuum now the only part that comes into play is right over here I'm not sure if you guys can see it I gotta connect these two pipes together and the angle isn't even the best right here on how they are sitting I might have to cut some of this pipe off here so it's a smoother angle uh, ideally I'd like to weld these here together these two pipes I don't have another straight coupler unless what I can do is maybe I can temporarily cut some of this coupler here I can cut this coupler straight here and then I can at least use some of the two inch um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to weld it again I, I just started welding uh, and aluminum welding is pretty challenging but we got that for the most part figured out I'm gonna mount the oil catch can here today as well and I'm probably going to finally put the gaskets on the manifolds today I got the permatex so we got to put it on there's a sequence you have to follow you got to put it on wait about an hour you know and then really torque it down so that's the goal for today the permatex takes 24 hours to fully dry so i think we might have to wait 24 hours before we actually start her up but uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes all right guys so behind the motor right over here it's hard to see you have your positive crankcase ventilation valve i took off the hose already the factory one as you guys can see how small this hose really is right here and we're gonna be doing a few things right the first thing is we're doing we're deleting the PCV valve and replacing it with just a straight shot fitting now this is an M14 to half inch fitting right over here and we got a half inch hose a bunch of hose here that we're gonna be running we got our oil catch can set up here now watch the video because we're gonna be essentially venting the crankcase pressure 
from the crankcase going into one of the ports here on the oil catch can and then this port is actually going to receive the crankcase pressure from the valve cover and then that pressure just vents out this is a modified oil catch can we gutted the inter in internals here just so it flows more efficiently um, the reason we're doing it this way with this setup is because we have no vacuum uh, to pull from the third port now if if the turbo is an open turbo the only vacuum you are gonna see is pre turbo once you go post turbo here it's already charge pipe so here. again originally I was gonna use this port as a vacuum but it's gonna get pressurized and actually push air into the engine and we don't want that so unless you have an intake here with a vacuum port you won't be able to use a three port oil catch can stick with the two so as you can see I kind of plug this third port so that's the way I'm running it right now hopefully eventually with fabrication skills improving maybe we'll make that intake and we'll get a vacuum port because ideally if you're running vacuum to pull some of the crankcase at low idle or really low rpms non-boost you're still letting the engine breathe and sucking out those contaminations away from the turbo where as this this system I'm having run here is great for venting crankcase pressure on boost and you know full throttle but at idle it's not really drawing any air away from the crankcase so it's kind of push and pull kind of setup um, some people don't like putting an oil catch can with the vacuum port because it's gonna suck all those uh, gases and oil contamination back into the turbo so it's a hit or miss hit or miss but that's the way we're gonna run it right now all right I got one hose right here going to the oil catch can into here and then I got that big hose routing from the PVC all the way running in the back to the oil catch can again didn't mount it up yet I just took out the turbo again and you know I gotta start this off early in the morning got the turbo here again we got to put all the gaskets in there so let's take a look at all our gaskets that we got now some of these gaskets are just straight metal this one is like a paper gasket that goes right over here I'm not sure how well that will hold but that's why I decided to get Permatex uh, with copper meant for exhaust so hopefully this helps us not leak so I'm going to take all this apart right now and then start putting on the gaskets. All right, this is what we are working with currently. One other thing, I did remove the donut gasket from the factory header, guys, and we're gonna have to try to make that gasket fit onto this housing here because it doesn't really wanna fit. As you can see, I kinda bored out that hole, but even then, it doesn't really wanna have a nice seal on here just yet, so I'm gonna have to bore that out later. Um, so hopefully then it can seal to that like S pipe going in the vehicle. Uh, that's that. Let's start cleaning up all these surfaces with acetone. One thing I do want to mention though on this manifold right here. This manifold is really weird because those studs go inside the manifold there. And they do see all that heat. And technically these things can leak from, from inside. It can leak past those studs because it's, it's, it's in an open area so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove these studs again i'm gonna put some gasket maker at the tip of the studs so hopefully we don't have a blowout of the gasket there either
I also want to point out guys that the fit of these is not the best like this one right now right now is kind of covering that exhaust port right now I'm gonna have to install it pushed all the way to the right in order for this to kind of seal properly and stop and not restrict airflow Alright guys, at this point here, I'm adjusting the wastegate preload here. If you guys remember from watching the previous videos, this was the original wastegate rated for 8 pounds. We replaced it with a 5, five pound spring. And I'm just changing the nut, the locking nut that was on here because I'm trying to preload the wastegate properly. I mean, if you don't have enough preload and tension on the wastegate, it won't be closing properly, and it'll pretty it, and it pretty much won't make boost as efficiently because by the time you're already making boost, this thing is already opening up. Now that could be a good thing for a low boost application if you don't want to blow the motor, but at the same time, we don't want to leave a lot of boost on the table and and not have it closed and leak boost. So. A general rule of thumb they say I'll show you guys a general rule of thumb is you want to get it to the middle to the middle of the bar there of the flap and that's enough preload see if if let's say let's say right here it goes on almost perfectly smooth right there you see right there it goes on perfectly one two See, I can't even get it all the way preloaded, but uh, I'm pretty happy with where it's where it's at right there. Just a little bit of pressure to keep it tight, and that looks pretty good to me. I can lock that up, and hopefully, hopefully that's good and it's happy, happy medium between building boost and having a good power band. All right, here's an example, guys. If you got your secondary O2 sensor, your drain lines right here, and then on top of that, your your intake pipe is right over here. You got just too much stuff going around and everything is touching. This honestly should have been relocated way lower, a little bit maybe off to the side. Regardless, this needs to be extended. These wires are too short to even plug into the harness. So that's probably what we're gonna be doing here. I mean, I could just run the cap off of this and not even in install the secondary O2, but eventually I'd like to pass emissions here even though I have this turbo kit. And that's probably going to include having an extended bunk here just to not catch all the exhaust gases. I don't know, but I do want to cut this, extend the wires a little bit, and then um, hopefully it works. Alright guys, well, here's some non-progress. I extended the wires here and I test fitted it and I'm still short like half an inch. So I'm going to have to redo these wires here for the oxygen sensor here, the, the secondary. The thing is, I'm not even sure if me extending these wires is absolutely destroying the sensor. That I'm not sure, but we got it mocked up again, test fit. As you can see, the gasket sealer is pretty much dry. We also put gasket sealer on my custom EGR delete here. 
um, test fitting everything I put the I put the vacuum line on the turbo as you can see right here guys it's a super tight fit between the wastegate actuator and the oil pressure sensor and I mean it, it barely touching should be fine but I just want to point that out that it's pretty tight now going down underneath let's just see what we got going on the oil line maybe this is a good one good view right here the oil line guys I had to shorten it about two inches I had to just cut a little bit test fit cut a little bit if it was too long right in the middle there it was a kink and you don't want to kink in the oil line because it's gonna not be able to drain properly so I got it clocked and cut perfectly where it's really not kinking anywhere now as far as the exhaust going down to the downpipe or the factory exhaust here this might actually work let me show you guys here what's going on so I'm reusing my factory donut gasket right as you can see right there the donut gaskets there and it's not the perfect fit right because the donut gaskets actually too small we need a bigger donut gasket two probably and a half inch donut gasket but I think I, I bore out I bore out the donut gasket a little bit so I'm thinking it might just snug in perfectly and I got these bolts here that are adjustable and I'm gonna be eventually once this is all mocked up here I'm gonna tighten this down real tight where where this is gonna dig the the downpipe is gonna dig into that uh, donut gasket and I'm hoping it's gonna seal up pretty good or you know at worst a minor leak and then eventually we'll we'll just get the bigger donut gasket and I think that would solve the issue I'm also gonna put a magnet right here on the oil filter um, that's just gonna help absorb all the extra metal shavings that may circulate through the oil pan here and yeah I still got to mess with the inner cooler piping a little bit more I'm probably gonna mock up the turbo permanently here I'm just gonna take this off put the factory OEM gasket back on with some gasket maker here and I mean this is dry to the touch already it's been about two hours but they say 24 hours for everything to cure so boys there's not gonna be a startup video on this part of the video that's probably gonna be on the next part but everything looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with the progress so far can't complain now I've gotten some comments before about why am I taking the radiator out I don't need to remove the radiator guys with the radiator removed uh, you could do so much more like tapping the oil pan this is essentially what I did I raised the condenser up and I had a straight shot there with my drill to tap the oil pan try doing that by hand also just mocking everything up trying to figure it out how everything goes without the radiator and the fans here is so much better and so much easier plus it gives you a better video footage of everything going on without the radiator here you guys can see the clearances the fitment and it's just a lot easier to plumb the piping now before I put the new system on I definitely want to check how much the old system weighed and compare it to how much the new system weighs I know there's gonna be a lot of people <laughs> asking the same question so let's figure it out it's definitely I'll tell you right now it's a lot heavier with the turbo setup what do we got 11.8 11.8 with the factory header all right I need two hands for this guys Alright guys, I got some tools with me and I'm actually, I'm not sure if you can see, I'm cutting this portion out 
the reason I'm cutting this off is because that intercooler piping that goes here does that 90 here it's just super tight and it's really crimping that coupler so I'm gonna remove this kind of flatten it out structurally I mean this is not the main frame it's just the support it's fine nobody is ever gonna know here and uh, it's gonna give me a lot more airflow moving along smoothly through this charge pipe system as you can see I pretty much smashed it up against the frame there bent it here so that's what it is looks pretty good to me and uh, again it should give me a lot more clearance here all right guys now that I have everything removed the charge pipe again this is the charge pipe that I went with right over here you can see the clearance between the exhaust down pipe and this one right over here I'm just gonna use something like this a 90 over here and that should work so I kind of have it mocked up here might have to even cut some more of this piping hold on one second though no, I got it twisted this is the most challenging thing probably about the turbo kit guys there you go so I'm gonna just put another 90 or put another silicone coupler there and then we are right here again now I kind of wish I didn't chop some of that piping off because now I can use that extra length here but it is what it is that looks pretty pretty good over here away from everything under the AC again away from that so that works that should work this side of the charge pipes this is the first test fit I did I actually utilized that two and a half to two and a half ninety but as you guys can see look at that spacing right there look at that super tight by the AC it's kind of tight right there as well this angle was pretty good right here but again it's too close for comfort right there um, I'm not liking it again we already know how important IATs are so that's a big no-no all right guys been playing around with the intercooler piping setup and this is pretty much how it's gonna be so again air comes in from the suction portion of the turbo gets compressed gets pushed out right over here nice 90 there again with that extra hole I cut out we got that wiggle room here where the coupler's not crimped so that's good goes through the inner cooler cools the charge pipe got another two and a half to two inch 90 right there you can see that and that's going to another pipe right now I got this duct tape again because I'm missing I'm missing just straight couplers like this so either I'm gonna buy another two inch uh, coupler here or maybe weld it probably the coupler right now just to get everything done and then weld it in the future I might weld these pieces right here and these just so there's less couplers but then it's gonna go to my blow-off valve my mass airflow sensor is a uh, blow by setup right here going here to a 90 again I know this looks like a lot of couplers but it's reinforced with metal underneath and that's the setup guys again we got the oil catch can chilling pretty right there everything's routed now I ran into some problems the big problems guys let me show you what the hell is going on so I tried to put my O2 sensor and I just bought this O2 sensor maybe at the beginning of the year in January right a couple months ago and look it's stripped you can kind of see it some of the thread is damaged when I was taking it out I noticed it was coming out bad and uh, when I tried to put it into the man turbo manifold I noticed it's stripped and like it's not gonna fit so I'm gonna have to try to see if I can squeeze into choppers see if he has a chaser to chase the the threads here and that will save my life because again brand new sensor guys these things aren't cheap or even this one i bought for the turbo build specifically original denso air fuel sensor don't buy the cheap ones guys i bought the cheap ones before and it didn't even read and again this one i told you guys i'm gonna extend it again because i failed to extend it the length i needed i'm gonna probably run it without the secondary o2 sensor from the beginning I got it capped off over there as you can see I got a cap on there and everything looks good drain looks good 
that exhaust is working right now I got it I got that exhaust fitted and I think that uh, OEM donut gasket will work the only thing I'm worried about now is I only got that factory exhaust and I'm boosted now so I might just take off the axle back muffler just so we uh, get rid of some of the restrictions I still have to run my blow off valve right the blow off valve is most likely gonna get turned down sideways over here because it's pretty high up like this it probably won't clear and this blow off valve is actually gonna get ran let me see if you guys can see it right over there to the intake manifold where your original PCV valve goes that's gonna be my one and only strictly um, blow off valve source that way it's efficient it's not t-tapped with anything else I'm not running any boost gauges I'm not running any oil pressure gauges guys keeping it really simple build here most of the sensors are on Hondata and you can see the boost pressure and whatnot uh, on Hondata so again keeping it simple here you guys see the whole setup guys it looks amazing again I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys all this and having this out and open so you guys can see how to do it properly there's a lot of folks on YouTube trying to make videos and do these turbo builds and I'm telling you I was in the same shoes I was interested in doing this and all these videos suck nobody explains anything it's just ratchet you know what I mean but hopefully my videos help everyone out that wants to turbo there are there are 18 guys and I appreciate the support smash the thumbs up and um, yeah I think that's gonna be a wrap for today's video guys I'm just gonna do some other little test fits try to get the radiator in here and see if everything fits I have to get uh, I have to go to chopper shop again because I did cut some of these pipes and I need to bead roll them the edges just in case the boost wants to pop the coupler off and whatnot I want to roll the roll the edges for example you can see this edge is rolled right here and this edge here and this edge here is just straight cut so we're gonna try to roll beads across these things so everything works efficiently and it works for a good long time so anyway guys that's a wrap thanks for watching subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram because on Instagram you already seen this it takes a long time to edit these videos and post them while working a full-time job that's two jobs so so if you want a sneak peek of what I'm doing Instagram is your best shot at bully kid I ain't here for the money I ain't here for the fame though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'm gonna do it all for you come along and see it's true